The place is actually massive. You're not allowed to film in here though, so I can't really film, but we've already picked up a few things. We found some star fruit, so we're quite happy about that. Um, Nazi Lamak. I recognise a few of them from um, Malaysia. Yeah. Quite far actually, isn't it? Right, what is happening? We are in Korea. <laughs> no, we're not really in Korea. We're in uh, New Malden. Um, New Malden is it's called essentially, or articles and papers called it Little Korea. Um, and the kind of capital of, of Korea of the UK because there's such a big population of Koreans that, that live here. Um, just walking down the street, you can just see residential Seoul, Chinese herbs and acupuncture. There's a big, big Asian community here, um, and biggest in the UK. In fact, there is a, there is a, a population of Koreans from both north and south here, which is, which is pretty mental. Um, and they still, in this time, they still live in, uh, in a in divide even here. There's apparently people um, that come over, uh, the, the southerners, both the southerners and the northerners come here. Um, and even, you know, the north being refugees, um, you know, the southerners still see them as communists. There's around 60,000 of Koreans living here. So it's quite a number. Um, especially for, for such a small suburb town outside of London. This isn't really London. This is kind of outside of town, you know? Do you say it's London? Not really, no. There's lots of people around though, regardless of lockdown. Yeah, lockdown. it's lockdown at the moment, but there's still quite a lot of people around. There's a bubble tea place actually over the road. Taiwanese, lovely. Lovely. Julia's Julia's face kind of for it. Julia's face is lit up. Yeah, it's kind of cold for it though. It's freezing. Yeah, it's cold. It is cold. Uh, we're just walking down New Malden High Street at the moment. Um, we're going to go to a couple of Asian supermarkets. Um, Which one is the first one? Uh, we wanted to go to the Old Plaza. I think we've walked past. Um, we're basically going to try and find some Asian ingredients. Something. You know, stuff we've been missing from Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Thailand, anything like that, um, Vietnam. Um, but in particular, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make some, some rotis and uh, roti chanai. So we're going to have a look and see potentially if there's any ready-made ones um, or anything that can make our lives a bit easier. I've looked at a few recipes that you guys have sent, mm -hmm. which look pretty good. I know there was a few recipes. Um, so we're going to check them out and uh, let's, uh, let's see how we get on. There's not a lot of Asian supermarkets in the UK. You'd be surprised, it's, yeah. it's few and far between. The place where I'm from, there's no Asian supermarkets. So I'm not sure what to expect. This one should be fairly big enough. Yeah, this first one we're going to, I think it's called CL Plaza. I think it's, a, it's just a Korean shop, so we're going to have a quick wander around. Do you think it's, it's going to be just Korean? Korean maybe, maybe. Julia is rich. Do you know what Julia just wants to come to these Asian supermarkets for? Is to find a Benji cake. If you're a Malaysian, you probably know what a Benji cake is. We've only had it once, actually. It was really nice. We had it and, and we loved it. If anyone could send us a Benji cake from Malaysia, like Julia would would love you forever. But yeah, I mean the, the high street here is quite busy. You can yeah, see there's a lot of people. Yeah, I want to my hopes too high though. This so is busy, so. this is how it all looks down here. This is it, I think. Oh, yeah, we didn't walk past things. It's quite far. Yeah, it was quite far, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, so this... Oriental for a specialist. It doesn't say Korean. Ah, OK. Right, so this, this is basically where we wanted to go first stop and just have a look around. There's nothing like this from where I'm from, so uh, we wanted to come and uh, have a quick look. I've just come in and they've already got pomelo, which we're quite excited about. We haven't had a pomelo or proper pomelo since we were in Malaysia. We got one from Italy, but it wasn't a very good one. <laughs> it wasn't great. They got nashi. They got nashi. Are they nashi pears. Yeah. They're nashi oh. pears, and then they got pomelos here as well. Yeah. It's pretty There's good. There's some here too. Ah, oh, these are really nice. Single ones here. Single pears. Just tonight. Very excited. Just we just spotted some um, bean curd stuff as well, which we really like. We had it. We had it in another yeah, shop over here. 
but you can never get any good any good like tofu or bean curd over here. It's always really bad in our supermarkets, but here it looks good. How does it feel being back in an Asian shop? Does it remind you of being in Asia? No. A bit, but I would say I think it's about maybe 80% Korean stuff. Yeah. So we haven't been to Korea yet, so a lot of these things are not that familiar to me. It's classic Julia oh, looking at so the drinks. Elaborate. She's always looking at the drinks. They look cute. <laughs> they look cute, don't they? I'm sure you like some of these. I think I, I recognise I recognise a few of them from um, Malaysia. Yeah, that's an Italian one. Well, that's Italian, is it? Yeah, something like that. That cost us six pounds. £6.79. We've got a pomelo there as well. I don't know what the pomelo is going to be like, but I hope it's going to be decent. I know that pomelo is usually really expensive, so I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. We've got some bubble tea as well, and a couple of soybean um, Maybe vegan pomelo classes. in Korea is not that expensive. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know why it was, it was cheaper, but it was. Right. Right, so, yeah, as I was saying, this area um, is basically called little Korea um, in the UK and I mean there's 70,000 Koreans living here which is which is quite a sizable amount it's such a small area that's you know not even in London I mean this is a kind of small suburb um, not very big so it's crazy to think there's so many Koreans here you know and the fact that there's still a divide here between the, the north and the south that it still exists I mean I've read articles on it online there's some crazy articles between how the north feel with the south and the southerners see them as communists and benefit cheats and you know difficult people where as the south they they like the British because they see themselves as reserved and um, similar to them it's a really strong onion here. there's a Korean yeah. restaurant there Kang Nam maybe more like Korean cafes and stuff like that do you know? Uh, Obviously, we wouldn't be able to. There do is that, supposed to be. There is supposed to be a lot of yeah. Korean cafes in this area. Yeah. Those would have been nice to visit. Yeah. Obviously, now everything is closed. We can only visit. Yeah. So it, it's very cold at the moment. It's probably yeah. about two degrees, three degrees. My hands are freezing holding this. Actually, Julie's just said to me. Was England always this cold, Pat? <laughs> I think it's always this cold. Yeah, England's always this cold. Every every January and February, it's the grimmest months in England. Um, like always like this. My body can process this cold. Either. Yeah, because you're in a, you're a southern southern European. Yeah, but I've lived in cold places for quite a long time now. I should be used to. It. But no, honestly, I didn't used to be this cold. So before before Julia moved to UK, uh, she lived in Sweden before. It wasn't this bad. <laughs> I swear it was really it wasn't this bad. And I never had such cold ears. It was like my ears might fall off. So there you have it. England is colder than Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think it feels actually colder because it's such, such a humid place. Whereas uh, Sweden is dry cold. And it's right. so easier to deal with. I can kind of handle it better. I tell you what, my my hands feel like they're falling off even holding this camera. I haven't got the stick on it. Why are your ears? My brother is. My ears are probably freezing. You, you might ask why we've not taken the mask off, but well, I'm not taking the mask off because it's so cold. Oh yeah. People, In fact, the mask is love, keeping my face warm. People love leaving comments about us wearing a mask on the street as if <laughs> we're not allowed. You know, we can wear a mask if we want. We we wore a mask outside when we were in Malaysia, in fact, because we had to do it at some point, and uh, it was about 35 degrees outside. Yeah. And we could handle it. It wasn't pleasant, but here, here wearing a mask is actually quite nice when it's one degree outside. This is what happens when you have a, a railway running through a village or a town or area in, in the UK. You get stuck behind one of these. <laughs> it's too cold to wait. <laughs> Julia's, Julia's threatening to jump over it. <laughs> right, so the place we're heading to now is a place called Hmar. Um, which looks pretty big. Um, it's Korean, but they have, looks to have a lot of Asian food. Um, 
and I read reviews and there's some Malaysian stuff and, and whatnot. So we're gonna have a look in there. Um, I'm also gonna have get a few bits to make some roti chanai as well. Um, what do we need? Uh, so, yeah, so there was a couple of recipes. Um, I did look at Ai Chang's one and I figured that maybe we could we could try her the way she made it out as well, which had condensed milk and ghee in it. Um, but there's also another uh, no, way from a nyonya, potentially. There was another nyonya um, recipe as well. I think we should probably just get the ingredients for both. The nyonya recipe is actually quite easy to do, but um, what did he have? Uh, it had just just basic stuff like. Um, the dal, I'm not too worried about particular ingredients. I've looked at a recipe. Um, it's a big shout out to everyone that sent us recipes. We're gonna have a look and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a butcher's, as they say in the UK. Is that what you're saying in the UK? Yeah. So here we are, we're at H Mart. It's basically in the middle of nowhere. It's like an industrial estate. So I'm expecting it to be huge bed. inside and vast. Like, there's not much around it. Oh, there's a bed and breakfast. Yeah. yeah. Right. We should probably stay here for the night. <laughs> yeah, it's so cold. My hands are about to fall off, I swear. Sure so here we go. HMR. The place is actually massive. You're not allowed to film in here though, so I can't really film, but we've already picked up a few things. We found some star fruit, so we're quite happy about that. Um, <laughs> massive, isn't it? <laughs> quite happy. We've got some kaya as well. Yeah, we've got some kaya, which is good. Uh, we didn't bring it back. <laughs> it's massive in here, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite big. It's quite big. Nazi Lamak. What pace have they got here, Julia? Uh, they got uh, Nazi Lamak. Nazi Lamak. Laksa pace. Laksa pace. And Nazi Goran pace. It's massive. Oh. This is the biggest queue on that queue. All the way down there. Three meters away. Oh, that's fine. It's stand outside. It's pretty cold, but oh, this is the joys when you don't drive in, in, in London. The thing is, is, is you don't really need a car in most of London. But where I live, kind of sometimes helpful. It would be. Uh... <laughs> My family's always like, no, no, no. You don't need a car. Waste of time. Waste of money. Even though I can drive, well-ish. I haven't driven in about 10 years, <laughs> but I'm not a bad driver. Not even drive. <laughs> right, we are back. How much did we spend, Julia? 32.45. 32.45 in H Mart. The reason I didn't film in there is because basically it said no photography in there at all. And I was reading a blog about this place and apparently someone had been stopped for taking photos oh, before. Really? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we weren't taking any photos, yeah, we weren't taking any risks. Us. There were CCTVs everywhere. Yeah, there was CCTV everywhere. It was quite crowded too. And, and it was just like smile, you're on camera, like everywhere. It just it's kept reminding day, you. So there were a lot of people in. And uh, it was it was cold in there as well. Julia's Julia's freezing at the moment. Uh, I can't feel myself anymore. But yeah. but Three look what we got. Frozen rotis. Frozen rotis. <laughs> These will be good. They won't be like they the real. Won't won't, like they won't be the real deal. But, but what we plan to do is we plan to make some. As I said earlier, um, we're going to make some rotis from scratch here. Should we put, this in the put them in the freezer. freezer. Yeah. Right, okay, we move rooms. Uh, so basically, what else do we get? We got um, some bubble tea. Oh, that was from Seoul Plaza. They, yeah. they had the bubble tea. We had this bubble tea in Malaysia from a news agency in, Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. Um, Ali, Ali something, the Ali bubble tea. So we've got it again, milk brown sugar bubble tea. Yeah, we found some Kaya. Kaya, yeah. I tell you what, breakfast is will be breakfast will be good again. Kaya is something we missed in Malaysia, um, so I'm, I'm glad to have some of this again. Some big tofu. Oh, you've got some tofu. Got some uh, star fruit. Oh, I got some star fruit as well. And we got we got some pomelo. Oh, we got a pomelo as well. Nice. Looking forward to that. Um, we got some of these from the fruit shop. We mentioned some kind of uh, bean curd. 
And uh, Masaman curry paste. Masaman curry, mmm. It's a curry paste. I mean, I like to cook, um, and I, I like to think I'm a good cook. So uh, we always we always like cooking. So all the paste and stuff like that is always great because you've got lemongrass, galangal, um, all those things that go into it. Julia's nicking out the pepero as well. I got pepero. I like these. <laughs> Whose favourite snack in Malaysia was that? Yeah, I mean everywhere in Asia. It's, it's Korean apparently. I didn't know. It's nice, very nice. I like the dried biscuits they have in Malaysia, the, the chocolate one. What are they called? They're famous ones. They are in, uh, in small packs. Do you remember the one we used to get all the time in lockdown? The dried chocolate biscuits? Yeah. Oteen. The uh, tiger roll, which is a bit like... Yeah. Which is a, looks yeah. like, she's right, it is a bit like a Benji cake. It looks like the kind of Benji cake. The colours are missing, but God, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, it's not going to be as good, but yeah, that'd be interesting to try it. Yeah, it looks really pretty. It's like when you look at when you buy this stuff, usually it doesn't taste anything like you imagined, though. So yeah, maybe, maybe it costs us. This cost alone six pound, which is uh, about 30, 30 ring it. Yeah, cool. So that was, I guess, uh, a venture around uh, New Malden, the little career. Um, and yeah, we found the biggest or one of the biggest Asian supermarkets around here. So uh, we're looking forward to getting more from there.